James asks, ordered mm -hmm. springs for my 602 from Crate Insider. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how to determine if they need to be changed using a spring checker on the engine, not the bench tester? Is there a certain number I'm looking to be above or below? Um, no, there's not. And I'll tell you why. It's because if you're using an on-the-car tester, um, number one, they all vary. Uh, I mean, you can buy the best of the best, which I, uh, the LSM tester to me is probably one of the best out there. But I'm going to pull that thing a different way than you pull it. And then Kate's going to pull that tester a different way than I pull it and you pull it. So you're going to get three different results. So what I always recommend to my customers is one person does it every week. So when you put a brand new set of springs on, you get a reading. You write down in your little notebook on what the reading is when they're brand new on the car. And then the same person does it every week and pulls that tester. And once you lose about five to eight pounds on seat pressure, it's probably time to like look at changing them. Right. Because really what you're trying to do. And honestly, that equates to if you're at the maximum RPM limit of the 604, which in my opinion is 6,400. And if you're turning that all day long, all the time, you're going to be changing those springs about every three to five races. A 602, 6,400 on a Correct. 602. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and you've mentioned before that with the valve spring pressure tester, you want to, you want to pull it back until you just feel it. Break the seat. Yeah. Right. And your version of when it breaks the seat. But it's going to be different when, than mine and your, your right. feeling is going to be different. We're than just going to feel it different. Correct. It's not that there's anything wrong with the tool. So, yeah, you've so, got the I mean, from pressure like testing. anything else, I mean, somebody, the person that's going to do it every week needs to practice with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it might take you quite a while to just figure out what, what that feel is right when it breaks the seat. But, well, because you're also turning the engine each time, too. Correct. And <clears throat> I mean, speak, speaking of that, on that note, um, anytime anybody's in tech, um, so like if you're in a tech situation, I've actually had people thrown out because I recommend the three quarters turn preload. Um, so when they're doing that, it actually gives a false reading on the, uh, checker. Okay. Sometimes. So like if you're in tech, um, you know, per the rules, I think it's a quarter turn preload. So you you should be able to back that off to a quarter rule, quarter turn. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that that was a rule. Well, it's in the GM performance book. Oh, so. okay. So it'll gotcha. give a, it'll it'll give a false reading is what I'm getting at. 